Hi guys, it's official. The auto market bubble has popped. Despite used car values previously outpacing that of housing, fine art and the stock market, they've now just seen their largest decline in a decade. Electric vehicles are selling for 32% less than a year ago and with owners starting to fall behind in their payments at the highest rate ever on record, there's a lot more pain expected to come very soon. So, given the soaring auto default rates among millennials and Gen Z, let's discuss exactly what's happening, why this is about to become a huge issue in 2024, and what you could do about this to get ahead. Because there's a lot going on that most people are not talking about. All right, so to start, you probably noticed that throughout the last few years, the cost of buying a car has been getting significantly more expensive. In fact, I've mentioned it before, but up until recently, 80% of new cars were selling above MSRP, which has got to make you wonder what's going on and how badly this is going to fall apart. Well, as far as why car prices were previously the best performing assets since shorting WeWork, look no further than four main categories that are soon coming to an end, with the first being limited production. See, in order to actually manufacture a vehicle, you need all the necessary components, and one of those is a little-known piece that many people forget about – chips. Semiconductors like this make it possible for the car to control everything from windows, sensors, ignition, navigation, and nearly every other aspect that nobody pays attention to until it breaks. In fact, modern cars require an excess of 3,000 of these chips in order to properly function. And even though that sounds like a lot, the auto industry only uses less than 3% of the global chip supply, while the rest gets used for consumer electronics. And so, those got priority. As a result of that, manufacturing delays, a lack of labour and a supply chain crisis led to a shortage of semiconductor chips, which led to a shortage of new cars being built and created artificially low inventory for prices to remain high. Secondly, interest rates have been quite low. Up until early 2023, buyers were getting loans with very low interest rates, some even for as long as 12 years. This made cars, like houses, more affordable. However, this high demand led to the highest car payments ever, now averaging $753 per month. Also, car loans have become the third biggest type of debt, just after mortgages and student loans, totaling about $1.5 trillion. So, as Americans could afford more, the prices of cars also went up. Next, the third point is about keeping cars longer. Similar to how homeowners don't move because they have a low fixed rate mortgage, car owners are doing the same. A report from July mentions that people are holding onto their cars for a longer time, which is why there aren't as many available. If you can manage your current car payments, why switch to a new car with a new loan, new taxes, and new issues when you can just keep the car you already own? Finally, the fourth point is about greed. This isn't too surprising because companies usually focus on what's best for their shareholders. Automakers have realised they can charge more by making fewer cars, and they're doing just that. An article by K Blue Book explained that car companies are deliberately not meeting demand. BMW, for example, said they'll keep making fewer cars to maintain their prices. Now, about the future of the car market and why this is a bigger issue than it seems, here's the key information. Regarding how much car prices have dropped, get ready, because this is quite intriguing. Cargurus, a website that tracks the value of millions of cars daily, reports that prices have fallen nearly 1% in the last month. The most significant drop was from Tesla, with their prices 33% lower than last year. Tesla is largely responsible for the decrease in electric vehicle prices. When they cut prices to sell more cars, other manufacturers had to lower their prices too to stay competitive. Additionally, for the first time, there are more used EVs for sale than new ones. So, the used car market is starting to take some sales from the new car market. Moreover, it's important to note that over the past year, different types of cars have seen price drops. Crossovers are down by 6.3%, hatchbacks by 99.1%, wagons by 
and vans are the hardest hit with a drop of more than 10%. Although car prices are still higher than before the pandemic, they are clearly declining now. This raises questions about how much further prices might fall and whether the whole car industry could face a major crisis. Now, let's talk about car dealerships. A YouTube channel, CarEdge, highlighted a major risk for sellers – high interest rates. They explained that dealerships often buy their cars on credit, not cash. So, the cars you see at dealerships are usually financed. With interest rates at their highest in 20 years, every day a car sits unsold at a dealership. It's costing them more money. For example, they clarified that two years ago, holding a pickup truck on a lot might cost the dealership only $2 to $4 a day in interest, but now it's costing them more than $12 a day. This means the dealerships are starting to get very motivated to sell off existing inventory, and most likely they could soon be losing money on the cars that they sell if they wait too long. About the car loan bubble, cars usually depreciate quickly, but between 2020 and 2022, the market was a typical. Typically, a new car loses about 11% of its value immediately and around 63% in five years. However, during the last few years, banks issued loans on overvalued cars due to high demand and low availability. This led to situations where, for example, a $50,000 loan on a Toyota Corolla made sense then but now borrowers owe much more than their car's current value. As a result, many are stuck with vehicles worth significantly less than their loans, especially with today's higher interest rates making refinancing a less viable option. Furthermore, as the situation worsens, banks are bracing for an increase in loan defaults. With the declining value of cars, banks are now more selective and cautious in their lending practices. They're not just focusing on who gets a loan, but also on the conditions of the loan itself. The challenge is greater because the interest rates are now higher compared to previous years, making loans more expensive for borrowers. This shift in the banking sector's approach is a direct response to the growing number of people who find themselves unable to afford their car payments. When car values drop but loan amounts remain high, borrowers find themselves in a position where they owe more on their car than it's actually worth. In many cases, instead of continuing to struggle with unaffordable payments, people are choosing to let the banks repossess their cars. CarEdge has noted that auto loan rejections are at their highest in 10 years. Banks are even writing off some loans as total losses, expecting that some people will never repay them. CNN reports that this is just the start. Experts think that the number of late auto loan payments will keep rising into 2024, possibly reaching about 10% before they start decreasing. A top analyst at Fitch mentioned that borrowers with lower credit scores are often the first to feel the impact of economic challenges. And it turns out, more than a third of Americans are in this group. There's also a big issue with car payments now being higher than rent for some younger people, particularly millennials and Gen Z. So, in terms of what this realistically means for you, your money and the market, here's what you came for. Practically, on average, car values are declining on a year-over-year -year basis. So if you're planning to buy a car anytime soon, that's good news. Except if you're planning to buy a pickup truck, because that category increased by an average of 7%. Now sure, that's not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but it is a sign that people are hanging on to utility vehicles that they use for work. So as a result, they'll have a higher resale value. The bad news, however, is that used car prices are still 33% more expensive than they were prior to the pandemic, which I've got to say is pretty consistent for just about anything that you'd buy today, from real estate to groceries to services to stocks. And this shouldn't be entirely surprising either, considering that the money supply also increased by 30%. On a side note, I know they're not correlated one-to-one -one precisely, but you get the idea. It's just interesting. Car Scoops discovered that used car buyers are now getting cars more than twice as old as they could for the same price in 2019. Also, considering that the average car is driven 10,000 to 15,000 miles a year, these older cars also have between 40,000 and over 100,000 miles for the same money. 
Sadly, this is the current market situation. But this doesn't mean prices won't drop more. This leads to the next point, give my car back. This topic was brought up by Lucky Lopez from an automotive channel. The phrase, give my car back, is more popular than ever, showing that many car owners are giving up their loans and cars because they owe more than the car's worth and can't keep up with payments. Zero Hedge, another website, calls this the perfect storm. People took big loans for overpriced cars they couldn't afford, and now they're in trouble. Loan delinquencies are the highest since 1994. Frankly, I don't see this improving soon. Most cars aren't investments, they lose value. Financing something that loses value at high interest rates is not a good idea. If people can't keep up with payments, we'll likely see more car repossessions and defaults rise. Although it's not exactly like the 2008 housing crisis, there's a growing number of people who can't afford $700 monthly payments due to higher interest rates, more unemployment and rising costs. Now, in terms of what you can do about all this, I tend to think that if you own a car that you can no longer afford and you can't sell it because you owe more on the car than what it's worth, then it might be a good idea to reach out to the bank and see if you could renegotiate your payments. It never hurts to ask, and in the long run, it might save the bank some extra money from having to take an even bigger loss and repossessing the car. Of course, if you're selling your car, I think it's always a good idea to price it realistically, take very good high-quality thorough pictures, and give it the proper exposure anywhere you can online. And finally, if you're looking to buy a car, now is the best time to negotiate. The market is absolutely changing in your favour, so use this to your advantage and try to score a really good deal. Really though, at the end of the day, all of it just comes down to this. Cars are not an investment. It is not normal for a car's value to go up over time. That just doesn't make any sense. The sooner we come to terms with cars being a money-losing proposition, the more equipped you'll be to take this into consideration the next time a dealership tries charging $100,000 for a Toyota RAV4. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more weekly investment tips. Leave a comment below. Happy investing!